On September 29, 1913, Rudolf Diesel boarded the SS Dresden en route from Antwerp, Germany, to London, England. He had just become the co-founder of a new British diesel manufacturing company. Speculation was he going to see the British Naval Command to talk about incorporating his world-changing invention, the diesel engine, into the Royal Navy in preparations for future battles. Mysteriously, the next morning, Rudolf Diesel was nowhere to be found. Last seen walking onto the ship the evening before, the boat crew only found his jacket and diary with a cross written on the last page of the book. The more you delve into his death, the more questions arise. Was it suicide? Was it a German assassin working for the government? Or perhaps did the world's richest man have something to with Diesel's untimely passing? Welcome back, history lovers. Today we dive into the death of one of world history's most innovative and popular inventors, Rudolf Diesel. Sit back, subscribe to our channel, and learn about what one of the most ingenious humans that you've probably never heard of. Born in 1858 in Paris, France, to Bavarian immigrant parents, Diesel displayed a keen intellect and a passion for engineering from an early age. But it was in 1892 that he would make his mark on the world with the patenting of the compression ignition engine, forever changing the course of transportation and industry. Diesel's most significant achievement came in 1892 when he patented the compression ignition engine that bears his name. Unlike the gasoline engines of the time, which relied on spark ignition, Diesel's engine ignited fuel through compression, offering higher efficiency and better fuel economy. This innovation revolutionized transportation and industry, leading to widespread adoption of diesel engines in various applications, from automobiles to ships to industrial machinery. His invention endures today as well, with an estimated 94% of cargo carriers using his engine to transport goods around the world. Let's dive into the conspiracies around his death. In the years leading up to World War I, military strategists recognized the potential of diesel engines for various applications, particularly in naval vessels and submarines. The British Royal Navy and the Imperial German Navy both sought to harness the power and efficiency of diesel engines to enhance their fleets. At the time, the German military understood the only way to match the Royal Navy's prowess was to venture into the submarine field. Germany purposely started to build more ships and subs via congressional mandates. The goal at the time was not necessarily to match and exceed the British, but rather force the British to pour more money into its fleet to maintain its domination. Thus, an ensuing arms race was the result. The British military, in particular, saw the advantages of diesel engines for naval propulsion. Diesel engines offered greater fuel efficiency and longer cruising ranges compared to traditional steam engines, making them ideal for long-range operations. Additionally, diesel engines produced less smoke, reducing the risk of detection by enemy ships. Similarly, the German military recognized the strategic importance of diesel engines, especially for their U-boats, submarines. Diesel engines allowed submarines to operate underwater for longer periods, thanks to their ability to run on compressed air when submerged. This extended underwater endurance significantly increased the stealth and effectiveness of German U-boats during both World War I and World War II. As mentioned earlier, Diesel was traveling to London to oversee his newly formed diesel company, but allegedly was to have secret meetings with the British military. Did the German intelligence get a hold of the information? Could they have made a move on Diesel to prevent the meeting? The situation remains shrouded in mystery. While many know John Rockefeller for his founding of Standard Oil, the world's richest man was also involved in the kerosene business. Kerosene, refined from gasoline, was used for candlelight back in the 1800s. By the late 1800s, Edison invented the light bulb, and it became standard across all major metropolitan areas, including residential and downtown properties. Rockefeller saw his net worth declining due to the change in technology. Thus, this made his fading monopoly in the refining business an even more pressing issue. The emergence of the diesel engine posed challenges for Rockefeller and the oil industry. Diesel engines offered the potential for greater fuel efficiency and reduced operating costs compared to gasoline engines, particularly in heavy-duty applications such as transportation, shipping, and industry. The most interesting and biggest threat came in the way diesel engines operated. Unlike gasoline engines, which primarily used refined gasoline derived from crude oil, 
Diesel engines could run on a variety of fuels, including vegetable oils and biofuels. This potential frightened Rockefeller and the industry in general. This diversity of fuel options posed a challenge to Rockefeller's control over the petroleum market as it opened the door to alternative sources of energy that could compete with conventional petroleum products. Imagine the farming industry being able to power the transportation industry by supplying a variety of vegetable oils to power the world's economy. Certainly, Rockefeller had motive. What about suicide? September 29, 1913, was the last night Rudolf Diesel was allegedly seen. Crew members of the ship found only a jacket, top hat, and diary on the bed of his room. The last thing written in the diary was a cross. Perhaps Diesel knew his fate beforehand? Ten days later, a body was found in the sea, badly decomposed. His son ended up identifying him through his items on the body. One of the most creative inventors in the history of mankind was dead, with no conclusive evidence as to how he died. Bizarrely, he left behind a bag at his house for his wife, with $130,000 in it. She was told not to open it for two weeks after he left. My wife, you were everything to me in this world, is what it read. Finally, an overlooked but plausible theory is that he vanished purposely. Diesel was partial to the British over the Germans, and he was going to England to meet with the Royal Navy. His body was never officially found, only identified by the possessions on the body in the channel. Maybe the Dresden boat ride was all a ruse. There was no follow-up investigation on the body found at sea. The boat left from Belgium, who was partial to Britain and not Germany. Perhaps the operation was meant to begin in a country aligned with the Brits, and they would have offered a safe haven in England. Maybe Diesel lived out his final days under the cover of cooperative governments across the world. Defection seems very possible. Perhaps his letter to his wife, which read, You were everything to me, didn't necessarily mean suicide, but rather a different kind of goodbye. Rudolf Diesel is owed his due. He lived an extraordinary life, coupled with an amazing invention that changed the world for the better. His engine proved to dominate the years and to come. It helped the Allies win World War I. He was humble, but lived a flashy lifestyle towards the end of his life. His death shocked the world, with headlines and updates coming from everywhere from Berlin to London to New York City. His death was even more shocking given the sudden nature of it. Historians liken it to someone as popular as Elon Musk, in his prime, dying unexpectedly. In the end, his life should be celebrated. Next time you are on a cruise ship or receiving goods from a huge semi-truck, remember the diesel name. That is it. From all of us at History Haven, we hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, and we will see you next time for another story from the Annals of History.